by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. Dozens of people are injured and several dead after a Greyhound bus collides with a truck in New Mexico. I'm Laura Podesta. I'll have details on the immediate aftermath of the accident as told by a good Samaritan who pulled over to help. And closer to home, federal judge puts the brakes on grizzly bear hunts in Idaho and Wyoming. Coming up, the arguments made in federal court on why an outfitter says having a hunt is actually a good idea. Just ahead of 6.30 on this Friday, Missy O'Malley is off. Matt Elwell has our Labor Day weekend forecast. Tragedy this morning in New Mexico. At least seven people were killed in a grizzly bus crash near the New Mexico-Arizona border yesterday afternoon. More than 40 people injured. CBS News correspondent Laura Podesta reports on the cause of that crash. First responders in New Mexico rushed to pull survivors out of this Greyhound bus. The front end was entirely ripped off after authorities say a semi-truck heading the opposite direction on Interstate 40 blew a tire, lost control, and crossed the median into oncoming traffic. Chris Jones, a good Samaritan, said he saw the accident ahead of him and immediately pulled over to help. There was a lot of screaming and yelling at a lot of people in need and just going to anybody for help. 49 passengers were on board the bus, which was heading from Albuquerque to Phoenix. It's going to take investigators quite a while to go through and actually identify who was sitting where and who were the drivers and who were the passengers. Oh, God, that was a woman. God bless them. Cell phone video like this was captured by stunned drivers passing the crash site. The National Transportation Safety Board says it sent a team of its investigators to begin looking into the incident. Laura Podesta, CBS News, New York. Now, Greyhound spokeswoman Crystal Booker said in a statement, quote, we are fully cooperating with local authorities and will be, uh, will also complete an investigation of our own, end quote. Uh, we'll continue to update you on that. CBS this morning will have a continuing coverage at 7 o'clock as well. Yes. Back here at home and now, Matt, 631, uh, not a bad start mm. to our last day of August. Wow. Crazy, Finality right? Finality here of Slipping August. Along. Yeah. I missed July somewhere. Uh, yesterday, not bad until mm. the wind kicked up. That made it a little uncomfortable if you were outside. For sure. But um, not bad. Mm. Temperature-wise this morning, holding into the 50s in Belgrade, 45 in Butte. We're sitting at 34 in West Yellowstone. Still have some lingering, lingering clouds out across the area. That's holding those temperatures up a few degrees for parts of the region. Temperatures today should be into the low 70s for daytime highs. If you're looking for rain, you're going to be looking for a while. We'll take a look at our rain chances for your Labor Day holiday coming up in a few minutes. Thank you, Matt. Just ahead of 632 now on this Friday, a U.S. District Court judge grants a request by tribes and conservation groups to stop grizzly bear hunts in Wyoming and Idaho. The request for a temporary restraining order and preliminary injunction was filed on Thursday. MTN's Dennis Bragg continues to follow the story. U.S. District Court Judge Dana Christensen is being asked to overturn the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service decision to remove the Yellowstone grizzlies off the list of threatened species, turning management to the states. The bears would still be protected inside Yellowstone and Grand Teton National Parks, but Wyoming and Idaho are already planning limited hunts outside the parks. This week, critics held press conferences and demonstrated outside the federal courthouse complaining grizzlies would be slaughtered, reversing years of recovery. Inside, attorneys complained the feds abandoned reason with glaring deficiencies in science, leaving state plans that create new threats to bears that didn't exist before, especially with increasing conflicts with people. They condemn the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service for taking a damn the torpedoes full speed ahead approach. But all the scientific papers are all pointing in one direction that you got to have thousands, not hundreds of bears. And there's no scientific dispute on that in the peer reviewed literature. And that was the point we tried to make. They might be okay over the next several decades. But that's not recovery under the statute. Long-term recovery is more like 50 plus, 100 plus years. And that's what the science is, I think, you know, consistently saying, um, you need more bears. Certainly, we think it's really important for the service to decide the fate of Yellowstone bears based on current science, not science that's stale at this point. As with any endangered species lawsuit, case law becomes increasingly important. At this morning's hearing, we heard about everything from marble murelet to Arctic grayling to wolves, as both sides try to convince Judge Christensen of their opposing viewpoints. State and federal attorneys argue grizzly numbers are improving, which is something to celebrate, that, quote, the bears are doing great. 
They say bears would remain under the watchful eye of the interagency grizzly bear committee. And further, delisting allows biologists to focus recovery in the Bitterroot, Northern Divide, and the Cabinet Yak, addressing the connectivity question of where bears wander and building public support for recovery. Well, I think people are watching the case very closely. Um, but uh, my comments on public support is that it may not be universal. Uh, for some people it's support, some people it's tolerance, but it's absolutely essential if we're going to have bears on the landscape over the long run in Montana. We need to maintain it, we need to cultivate it. It, it feels historic and, and the defendants you know, made, a, I think, a really weak case saying people are tired of it and they want it to be over. That's, yeah, we get to get tired, but we have to do the job right. And the feds got caught cutting the corners. In Missoula, Dennis Bragg, MTN News. Now, Judge Christensen's decision to issue the temporary restraining order gives him at least 14 days to make a final ruling. However, some hunters have been waiting decades for this opportunity, and for outfitters in the area, this ruling is the exact opposite of what they had hoped for. CBS Stan Bush talked to one outfitter who says Wyoming's call is for the best. Wyoming's backcountry is untamed. Typical hunts are seven total days. It's where Taylor Ingham makes his living, saddling horses and packing mules to take hunters into the wild. I became an outfitter because I wanted to share this place with people from all over the country. Around this time, Ingham is usually focused on elk season, but this year he's one of only a handful of outfitters that has been licensed to hunt for grizzly bears. This is Definitely a core grizzly habitat. A lot of bears live in this valley. This land saw grizzlies thrive, then go nearly extinct, and now return to the point where Wyoming officials say grizzlies can be hunted again. So we're going to set up our spot and scope and we're going to start glassing some of these ridges and these open meadows. A ridge below tree line is where Ingham says he'll make plans for hunting the bears. We'll probably just be looking for, you know, a bear that's traveling or you know, just moving across a, a hillside. Ingham knows the grizzlies are out there. His game cameras have frequent close encounters with them. Ingham's game cameras saw up close bears we only saw traces of. Still, outfitters say they're taking a risk dedicating so much to the hunt. It's possible that they're out here for 10 days and they don't get one? It is possible. The hunt depends so much on the weather and the time of year. But the hunt coincides with elk season, attaching it to controversy. Hunters say a bear will likely find where an elk had been killed and gutted within a day. Baiting is outlawed, but sitting on a kill and waiting for a bear to come is legal. One of the techniques that I think a bear hunter would use is, is to follow birds. Opponents worry this hunt will be a slaughter. Ingham and supporters say it's a part of conservation, and he's not optimistic about his chances. If there's no cost benefit to doing this, why do it? I believe that we should hunt grizzly bears because they're part of the ecosystem. They have an effect on elk. Elk has an effect on them. Hunters say while there may only be about 700 grizzlies in the region, they're concentrated in an area that's unhealthy for the rest of the ecosystem, putting livestock, wild game, even people at risk. But Wyoming appears to be alone in this stance. They've issued permits that could kill up to 22 bears. Idaho will only allow one grizzly to be killed, and Montana won't allow any at all. The plan is solid, the population is solid, and uh, I think that it's going to continue to be. Wyoming hunters say hunting grizzly bears is their right, a statement about their way of life and something they've worked towards for 40 years, the last time there was a grizzly season here. Now in other headlines this morning, the Bullock administration has rolled out the details of where it plans to restore nearly $46 million in state spending this year. The money mostly fills in programs whose budgets were cut last year, many of them in human services. Cuts had been made after state tax revenues failed to meet certain targets. The governor called a special session of the legislature last November to approve some of those cuts and mitigate others. Now revenue has bounced back, enabling some budgets to be restored. State Budget Director Dan Vila noted highlights of the plan, including aid for lower-income college students and spending for the Flathead Tribal Water Rights Compact. But most of the money, $30 million, is going to human service programs, like restoring hospital rates, higher pay for group home and nursing home workers, mental health care, and for dental care.
Well, to paraphrase James Taylor, we've seen fire and we've seen rain. So how do fire officials decide when the fire season is over? And Tans Carson Vickroy has the answer. Fire season doesn't end on a definitive date. Instead, it depends on the weather. To really have an end to our fire season, we need a, you know, a, a widespread rainfall that lasts over an excessive period of time and allows all that um, moisture to soak into the fuels in the soil and really moderate that fire growth. There's no definitive time on when that rainfall will occur. When that occurs, we're not sure. We do have a predictive services who just recently released a report that they're thinking our fire season could go well into um, October. They're thinking we'll have above normal temperatures through September, October, and they're predicting a, a fire season ending event, a moisture event by the end of September this year. The resources are there to accommodate a longer fire season. We have our crews on through, uh, most of our crews are on through September. We have a smoke jumper aircraft in West Yellowstone, two helicopters that um, their contracts go through October 1st. So we, we keep folks on um, throughout the month of September. Sometimes fire season can last through the end of the year. Well, in this area, I've been on fires through October, usually by middle October, we're normally done with our fire season. But um, we had crews out in North Carolina a couple years ago, well into almost Christmas time. In Bozeman, Carson Vicroy, MTN News. Now, officials say a recent rainfall has slowed the Bacon Ryan fire, but it's still burning in spots. Again, uh, a lot of that dependent. We had those winds yesterday. That doesn't help fire no. situations. And then we're looking at a nice stretch of dry weather, albeit it's not going to be hot, but uh, certainly right. keeps it burning. And it only takes one careless camper or one That's lightning right. strike to keep us in that fire season. That's exactly yeah. it. Good transition to Labor Day weekend. We'll That's talk right. more about that. We'll have some uh, your forecast for that after the break. But first, uh, as we uh, head into the break, grandparents returning to parenting. That's the reality some families dealing with with the opioid addiction. We'll take a look at how some grandparents are making it work. But first, here's a quick peek at what's coming up at 7 on CBS this morning. Good morning ahead on CBS this morning. We're in New Mexico after a deadly Greyhound bus crash. We hear from a passenger on board who helped rescue others. And only on CBS this morning, a shark attack survivor tells us how he fought off the animal using tips from a TV show. We'll see you at 7.